Hey everyone, welcome to my journey through Nintendo's handhelds, all the way from the original Game Boy to the Switch OLED and everything else in between. I've got them all here on the table and I'm going to go through my journey through each system and some of my favourite games along the way. So with that said, let's get started. So the original Game Boy. This is a console that I have so many great memories and so much nostalgia for. So let's begin with some of the first games that I ever played on the system. And strangely, the first game that I ever remember playing was actually the original Tennis for the Game Boy. But of course, if you've been on my channel for a while, you'll know that it's not just Tennis that I love on the Game Boy. My obvious go-to game on the Game Boy has always been the original Super Mario Land. And this was one of the first games that I ever played on the Game Boy as well. And I'm sure you know if you've been around on the channel for a while, but I just absolutely adore everything there is about this game. And at one point in time, I could even equal the world record for the speedruns for this game as well. Around 11 minutes, I think, at the time. And there was one more game that I played quite early on in my Game Boy journey that's always stuck with me all these years later. And that was Zelda Link's Awakening. And there is one thing in particular that really stands out in my my mind as a reason why I remember this game so vividly. So back in school, in primary school this is, we were allowed a day where we would bring in a toy to show everyone else or just to play on for that day. It might have been the last year of class or something like that. So most people were bringing in things like Rubik's Cubes or whatever their favourite teddy is or something and I brought in my original Game Boy and my copy of Link's Awakening and I sat in the back of the class all day and just played all the way through Link's Awakening. So that is a very good memory that I have of the game. Just despite me uh, kind of being a recluse for the day and not sharing my toy with any of my friends, which we were supposed to be doing. And then of course, a few years after, the Game Boy Pocket came out. And I remember that my parents were very kind and they actually bought me this when we were on our way to go on holiday to the south of France. And I believe the game that I got to go alongside the Game Boy Pocket is, was actually Wario Land 2. I'd never played the original Wario Land, but Wario Land 2 completely blew me away with its open-ended world and the really interesting puzzles. It was very different to the Mario Land games that I knew and love, but even so I had a fantastic time playing through Wario Land on that holiday and in the car on the way home. Of course, I'm sure a lot of you can relate, but I didn't want to get out of the car when we got home. I just wanted to stay there and play more Wario Land 2. That is how much I loved that game and that experience on the Game Boy Pocket. Of course I would also grow to love the original Pokemon games and I've got all three of my originals right here. My friend at the time had blue and I think I got red so we spent a lot of time trading between the two. And then a bit later on I picked up yellow and I remember when I got this actually I got it from GameZone in the town centre and GameZone was one of my favourite shops at the time but unfortunately they're no longer around and they had to close down so that is a really sad story but at least I have this game to remember it by. Now next of course is the Game Boy Colour and I don't really remember exactly when I got this system but I do remember one game in particular that I spent a long time playing and I've got it right here. This is going to be quite funny for anyone who hasn't seen this before on the channel. Here's my most memorable Game Boy Color game. This is called 32 in 1 USA version Advance Color. And basically it was just a collection of about 10 ROMs and then a bunch of different names for the same ROM. But I fell in love with it and it was a way that introduced me to a lot of games which I then went back and picked up on my own later. For example, Dragon Warrior Monsters, which easily became my favourite game on the system at the time. I fell in love with everything that Dragon Warrior Monsters stood for. It was a step above Pokemon for me at the time, honestly, and I remember countless sleepless nights with the worm light on the top of the Game Boy Color. Do you remember that thing that came out the top that would go in the link port? I would spend ages under the covers playing through Dragon Warrior monsters and just getting more and more engrossed in the world and the characters and the story. Such a such a great game. Another game that I got for the Game Boy Color was actually the Color Upgrade to one of my favourite original Game Boy games, Wario Land 2. And I've got the Japanese box here because I love how it looks on the cover there. But yeah, absolutely loved Wario Land 2, both versions of the game. And I've picked out three more Game Boy Color games that really left a lasting impression on me. So one of them was, of course, Dragon Warrior Monsters 2, which was a fantastic evolution of everything that made the first game so great. As well as that, I also fell in love with the Pokemon trading card game. Not specifically Gold and Silver, although I absolutely love those games as well. But more than those, the one that I always seem to go 
back to is actually the trading card game, so really, really enjoy this one and definitely recommend it for anyone who wants a little bit of a different Pokemon experience. And the final game here, and one of my favourites on the SNES, this was the Game Boy Color version of Donkey Kong Country. And I did include the Donkey Kong Land games in my Game Boy Top Games video, so I do love that series already. But what Rare did with this and translating it onto the Game Boy Color was just absolutely incredible at the time. It honestly felt like playing a console experience on a handheld, and I was just overjoyed to be able to take this with me to my nan's house after school and play a game that I've been playing at home as well on the go. Next up is, of course, the Game Boy Advance. And there's a very exciting reason why this is one of my most favourite and prized Nintendo handhelds. Not this version here in particular, I actually got the purple one at launch, but I don't know where that one's gone today. But the story is that the GBA was actually the first console that I ever got on launch day. So day one, I was there with the Game Boy Advance, and what games did I get on day one? I'm sure you were expecting me to say Mario Advance, but no, I didn't get Mario Advance until a little bit later on. The game I actually got at launch was Pino B Wings of Adventure, because I thought, I've already played Mario 2 before, I don't want to re-experience it again, it's just going to be the same old game. So I went with Pino B, and I actually really enjoy it. I know a lot of people say it's not really the best platformer out there, but I think it has some really unique ideas, and I was amazed at the graphics at the time. Coming from the Game Boy Color to the Game Boy Advance, there was one bit where Pino B can walk into a door, and I was just amazed, and I showed everyone that I knew, and they were like, yeah, cool, he goes through a door, I guess. And then shortly after launch, I think, there was one other game that I picked up, and again, it wasn't Mario Advance just yet. The other game that I got was Rayman Advance, and I'd never actually played Rayman before, so this was my first entry into the Rayman series, and I was just completely blown away by the graphics once again. And the game itself is much more fun than Pino B as well, so I absolutely fell in love with Rayman as a character and as a series, and since then I've played every game in the Rayman series, and I've loved all of them, but that love stems from the Game Boy Advance one right here. But the reason that I wanted Rayman in the first place and the reason that I knew about it was because of a new magazine that I'd been getting. And this is called Action GBX and it came with these VHSs here. And as you can see, I've got the wrong one in there. It says issue six, where it should be issue one. But regardless, the point is, this is how I found out about Rayman through these videotapes here and through the magazine as well. So that's a really nice memory and I'm really happy that I still have both of these, and I'm sure I have tape one down there somewhere. Yes, there it is. I do have it somewhere. There it is, tape one. I also loved the GBA era because I was just starting to get my own money and there were so many really cheap but really interesting games for the system. So I've got one here with the original price sticker on there. Look, I managed to get Kuro 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 in, which is a fantastic puzzle game for the Game Boy Advance, for £3.99. And I remember buying this with my own money and coming home on the bus all by myself. It was a very big day for me. And I got this game and I played it all day and I was just blown away by the inventiveness of this game and how unique and different it was was to anything else that I'd played before it. And as for some of my favourite games for the Game Boy Advance, well, once again, you can go back and watch my top 15 if you want to know all of them, but, but three of them that really stand out for me are the original Golden Sun, one of the first JRPGs that I actually played all the way through to the end as a kid. I absolutely loved this game so much, and I'm sure if you've played it, you, you feel the same. Mega Man Battle Network 3. This was a game that me and my friend Jack at school really loved, and we would always share where we were at in the game and all the different cards that we'd collected, and battle each other and share our progress and stuff and I just love the Battle Network series in general but 3 is always the one that brings back the fondest memories for me. Another game that I got on holiday and I'm so glad that I still have my original box here because it has the original price and also the shop where I bought the game from. This was another game that I got in France because as a family we would go to France quite often and apparently I spent 35 euros on it and here it is, Advance Wars number one and I got it from a place called Doc Games and I tried to find this on Google Maps to see if I could remember where it was to see whether I could go back there in my mind but unfortunately the shop no longer exists and it is now just one of those mobile phone accessory style shops so what a downgrade in the 20 years since I picked this up and it has been exactly 20 years because it says here I picked it up on the 20th of May 2003 so there you go 
And of course, over the years, I also picked up the Game Boy Advance SP, and I remember this came out just after my birthday. My parents actually wrote me an IOU and a cutout from a magazine of the Game Boy SP, saying an IOU, one Game Boy Advance SP. I think it was coming out on the 27th of March, and my birthday's on the 20th, so I had to wait seven excruciatingly long days until I could get my own. And this is my original Game Boy SP, complete with some Paper Mario stickers on the front there. And then in 2005, after the DS came out, but jumping back a little bit, I also got the Game Boy Micro. And this isn't the one that I got on day one, this is the one that I picked up in Japan. This is actually the Famicom Special Edition, which just looks incredible, and I love the design of the Game Boy Micro. Just look at the insane progress they made in just four short years. In the size comparison, in the screen quality, it's just an incredible step up. Although it is a little bit awkward to play, especially for big adult hands these days. And then, of course, moving on to the Nintendo DS, which again, I also got on launch day. Here's my original system, still holding up, the hinge still works, surprisingly. And of course, because I got it on launch day, I also got Metroid Prime Hunters First Hunt, which is basically a demo of the Metroid Prime Hunters game to sort of show off what the DS is all about, and I was very, very impressed. Of course, just seeing a 3D game on a handheld at the time was just a magical experience for a lot of people back then, me included. For the first time, I'd actually been following the launch of the system on the internet as well, so we are now in 2005, and of course, as I'm sure everyone else who picked up a DS on day one also got Super Mario 64 DS and what an incredible experience once again. Maybe the controls weren't perfect. If you remember back then it actually came with this weird thing that you could put on your thumb to use the touch screen as an analog stick which of course was a terrible idea and it barely works but anyway I was so amazed at being able to play an N64 game on my handheld that I didn't really care about the controls at the time and I remember inviting people back to my house after school and they were just blown away by it too. Another game that I got slightly after launch, and this is another game that I got from GameZone, and it does actually have a very, very faded receipt from GameZone in there as well. You're probably not going to be able to see anything on the camera, but that was a game that a lot of people really don't like that much, and I feel really sad about that because I love this game. This is Yoshi Touch and Go. Definitely not what you would expect from a Yoshi game. This one's actually a score attack style game where you basically play the same three stages over and over and see how good you can get at the game. Of course, I played it a lot and I got very, very good at the game. And this was actually one of the first games that I ever imported as well, because if you noticed, the spine is actually thinner. That's because this is an American copy and I actually got this before it came out in the UK because again, I'd been reading all the previews and the magazines and stuff and I couldn't wait any longer. So I actually asked GameZone to import this for me. So that is a really nice uh, memory as well and it's definitely the start of what became a bit of an obsession with me with importing games too. Now, as for three of my favorite games for the DS, I have to start with Another Code 2 Memories, which was one of the first adventure style games that I played, and it really, really caught me by surprise at just how engrossed I got in this story. And of course, I'm very much looking forward to the remake that's coming out very soon for the Switch. And I really fell in love with story games on the DS as well, because the other two that I wanted to show off for my favorite games for the system are actually two other story games. We have Time Hollow and we have Kingdom Hearts 358 over two days. Both of them have really interesting stories, really interesting characters, and again, I got completely engrossed in both of these. And like I said about the other systems, if you want to hear more about some of my favorite games for the original DS, then I did make some top DS games videos as well. And of course, just like the Game Boy Advance, I did pick up the other editions of the system as well. So here's my DS Lite, and the hinge hasn't been quite so lucky over the years, but this is the color that I decided to get when I got my DS Lite. And weirdly, the game that I remember most playing on the DS Lite is actually Castlevania Circle of the Moon using the Game Boy Advance slot on the bottom. And then of course, a few years after that, the DSi came out, and here's my original DSi, and I loved all the downloadable games. In fact, some of my earliest videos on this channel are from some of the downloadable games for the DSi, including WarioWare Snapped, and I was incredibly impressed at the time with YouTube because my review of WarioWare Snapped actually got more views than the official Nintendo video for the game, and that was one of the main reasons why I kept making videos back then, because of my WarioWare Snapped DSi review video. So, have very fond memories 
memories of the DSi as the start of this channel all those years ago, back in 2009 or around that time. So really love the DS line of systems. But now we're moving on to the 3DS. And unfortunately, I don't actually have my original 3DS here because I ended up selling it in order to get the new 3DS because I was lucky enough to get over here, the Ambassadors Edition. And this was something that only a select certain people were able to get thanks to Club Nintendo, which I missed dearly, but it was thanks to that that I managed to get this. But without skipping ahead too much, let's talk about some of the launch games that I got with the original 3DS first. So I'm sure you know, but the 3DS didn't really get off to the best of starts, and that kind of goes to show with the two launch games that I picked up for the system. So I ended up getting two games at the launch of the 3DS. Of course, just like everyone else who got the system on day one, Pilot Wings Resort was the first game that I got, and I actually completed this game 100% over the weekend when I got the system. I was at uni at the time, and I had a lot of free time, so literally from the minute I woke up until the minute I went to bed, I was just playing Pilot Wings Resort and doing absolutely nothing else to the point where my eyes were getting a bit affected by the 3d and I was looking at things in the real world and words were starting to pop out of presentations and things even though they weren't in 3d so something in my brain had got a bit twisted from playing far too much pilot wings but I did enjoy it for what it was although it was over way too soon and the same applies for the next game here which was uh, Super Monkey Ball 3d which was the other game that I picked up around the launch of the system and I was incredibly disappointed by this game I'm sure you know I'm a massive fan of Super Monkey Ball. I have every game in the series. I've played them all pretty much on day one since they came out. But this game has to be the worst entry in the entire Super Monkey Ball series for me. I completed the entire game in about two hours and I didn't die once. And since then I've never put it back in the system apart from that one Super Monkey Ball retrospective video that I did a few years ago. But yeah, really hate this game and I really hate that it's one of my memories of getting the 3DS. And then there was a big long in the 3DS until the next game that I got a few months later was Dead or Alive Dimensions. And I enjoyed this for what it was. I wasn't really a fan of fighting games at the time, but I needed something new to play on the 3DS because I'd basically exhausted all the possibilities of these two games. And this one helped tide me over until some more interesting games came out a few months later. The next one I got after Dead or Alive was Resident Evil Revelations, and this was a revelation in Nintendo handheld gaming at the time. This was the first time that I'd played a game on a handheld and actually thought we have equaled console quality gameplay and graphics. This game just completely blew me away at the time. It looked unbelievable. And of course I got it with the extra circle pad to be able to use the camera. And I really loved this game and it's still one of my favorite games in the Resident Evil series today. And of course I know a lot of other people really love this game too, but Kid Icarus Uprising completely blew me away at the time. Apart from Twilight Princess, this game was probably the one that I was most excited about before it came out. I remember watching the original trailer at E3 and I was just completely blown away and I couldn't wait to get my hands on it and it absolutely lived up to all of my expectations and more. It's still one of my favourite Nintendo made games ever to this day. And finally, a game that really took me by surprise and one that I enjoyed a lot more than I thought I would, Kirby Planet Robobot. It came out quite late in the 3DS's life, but I just absolutely loved this. I was a massive fan of Kirby's earlier adventures on the Game Boy and on the SNES, but I kind of fell out of love of the series around the N64 entry and the first one on the 3DS kind of made a bit of a meh impression on me and the same with the DS ones as well. But this one really brought my love of Kirby back to the forefront and I loved this game so much. It's so innovative with its gameplay mechanics and it just took the Kirby formula to the next level. And it wasn't afraid to be a little more difficult as well and they've kind of toned it down again for the Switch releases. So, so I definitely recommend you check out Planet Robobot if you enjoy Kirby and you want something a little bit different to the more traditional Kirby games that we get these days. And as for the other editions of the 3DS, of course I got the 2DS here and this is actually the Pokemon Moon edition and I have a really exciting story to go along with getting this. So I was actually invited to the launch event for Pokemon Sun and Moon and it was my first time going to one of these industry shows and I had an amazing time there. It was set out like a big fun fair and there was loads of different activities to do and the designer of Pokemon was there as well so it was a very exciting day and we all got to buy the system and the game before it actually launched. So I've got my system here that I got from the event in London. So there we go, I'll go on the other camera so you can see it a bit clearer. 
It's got the three starter Pokemon on the back there. And on the front there, it has a really nice little Pikachu. And it's a really interesting system as well. It's actually very nice to hold. And I basically used this as my Pokemon machine for the longest time. It's got all of the Virtual Console Pokemon games on. And I played all the way through Sun and Moon and Ultra Sun and Moon. And I went back and played X and Y again. And the uh, Omega Ruby and Alpha Sapphire on here as well. So this was my main Pokemon machine for the longest time. And I kind of feel nostalgic just holding it again today so really like the 2ds actually even though it's obviously made for kids and then i kind of already brought this up this was the ambassadors 3ds of course i've replaced the face plates at this point i've actually got these custom miku ones on there which i think looks really nice and then when the 2ds xl came out i upgraded to that and here is my pikachu 2ds xl and this is sort of my main 2ds console that i use to play most of the games on of course I do have all the other ones, but this video is already going on way too long as it is. So let's move on to the next and final console, the Nintendo Switch. So apart from Breath of the Wild, which kind of is a Wii U game, the Switch kind of has the same sort of feeling as a 3DS to me in terms of the quality of the launch of the system. So here's my original launch day Nintendo Switch and I was very excited for the system. Again, I went to a pre-release for the system before it came out and I got to play Zelda early, I got to play ARMS and Snipper Clips and a bunch of other early games for the Switch. But unfortunately, the actual launch lineup did leave a bit to be desired. So the games that I got at launch were 1-2 Switch, Bomberman R and of course Zelda Breath of the Wild and I loved Zelda, I absolutely thought it was fantastic, although it's not my favourite game in the series, but the other two games that I got on launch I was sorely disappointed in. You can actually go back on my channel and watch my thoughts of these games when I invited my friend Jack Ryan to play them just after the console had come out, so if you are interested in seeing that, definitely go back and check out the channel, but yeah. Kind of disappointing launch for the system, honestly, and it took a while to build up, just like the 3DS did, but I still really enjoyed the system and there was a lot of interesting downloadable games at the time as well. But there was one game that I really enjoyed near the launch, and that was Xenoblade 2, and I was a massive fan of the first game on the Wii, so I was very excited for this, and it completely engrossed me at the time. There wasn't really a lot else to play on the system at the time, but I really fell in love with Xenoblade 2. I loved the music, I loved the characters, I loved the world and the exploration and of course I was a huge fan of the first game so anything Xenoblade at the time I would just lap up so I still love this game today and I actually still haven't played Xenoblade 3 despite also getting it on day one so I really need to rectify that at some point. And two other Switch games that I really love and I would like to highlight here. Metroid Dread was a game that every Nintendo fan has been waiting years and years and years for all the way back since the original DS. That's how long it took for this game to come out and it did not disappoint. The uh, attention to detail, the polish that this game's got, the incredible controls as well. Although I did enjoy Samus Returns on the 3DS, I was a little bit worried because Mercury Stream aren't my favourite developers but they actually knocked it out of the park with Metroid Dread and I could not be happier with it. And the final game in this video and the final game for the Switch that I wanted to highlight is Pikmin 4. Quite a more recent game for the system but one again that I really loved. I 100% completed it, it took me 50 hours which is way more than any other Pikmin game and way more than I thought it would take. But it goes to show that I must have loved the game because usually I would just give up after about the 20 hour mark if I wasn't enjoying it but I really really enjoyed my time with Pikmin 4. And as for different system revisions, of course I got the Switch Lite here. I didn't really play on the Switch Lite as much as I thought I would because it's really not that much smaller than the original Switch. So it does feel kind of redundant and I guess it was just a cheaper Switch for those who didn't want to pay a little bit extra to get a dock. So I still don't entirely understand the reason for the Switch Lite's existence, if I'm completely honest. And then of course the Switch OLED came out. It honestly is the perfect version of the Switch and it feels so good. The screen is so nice and vibrant. And I can't wait to see what Nintendo comes out with next. I really hope it is another hybrid system because I really love what they've done with the Switch overall. Anyway, thank you so much for watching. This video was a lot longer than I thought it was going to be. I really hope you enjoyed my journey through Nintendo's handhelds. Let me know your journey down in the comments below. Thank you so much for watching. Subscribe to the channel if you enjoyed this, and I'll see you all again very soon. Goodbye.